Your door has plenty of headroom, but does it also have footroom? <laughs> you probably know already that your digital audio workstation software has massive headroom, mahoosive, which is why all the fear, uncertainty and doubt over gain staging is mostly nonsense. I did say mostly there. If you'd like a video on that, let me know in the comments. In the meantime, watch to the end for my three commandments of gain staging. Anyway, your door has massive headroom, and unless your studio is struck by lightning, you're never going to clip it internally. But what about the other end, down there where all the noise is? Does your door have footroom as well as headroom? OK, analog fans, let me talk a little about old fashioned magnetic tape, or I could choose vinyl, cassette, or even that newfangled digital thing called compact disc, even if it isn't analog. They all have a dynamic range between the loudest and the quietest sounds they can handle. Go too loud on tape or cassette and you get distortion. Too loud on vinyl, well the vinyl mastering engineer won't let that happen, but if he or she did, then the stylus would jump out of the groove of the finished record. Too loud on CD and you get clipping, which is a distortion rather nastier than tape. But going back to tape or cassette, record too loud and you get distortion. But if you record at too low a level, the audio you and your audience want to hear gets contaminated by noise. You're too near the noise floor. It's an interesting point that the noise floor doesn't mean that there's no wanted audio signal there. The actual audio signal can be lower in level than the noise floor, as it can be with digital when there's dither. But the noise floor is there and it sets a limit on how low you can go. So. Does this apply to your door? Let's see. Despite your door's massive internal headroom, we kind of think of 0 dBFS as the top, because when you bounce to a 24-bit WAV file, it is the top. So let's call 0 dBFS the top for the purpose of this video. So where is the bottom? Minus 138 dBFS. Yes, minus 138 dBFS. How do I know that? Well, it's the lowest calibration I can get on my Pro Tools faders before they hit minus infinity. So perhaps that's where the noise floor lives, minus 138. Someone in the comments is bound to make a SpongeBob noise pants joke, so hey, I've just done that for you. You're welcome. So I'm going to put on my James Cameron costume and explore these mysterious depths. I'll start with a sine wave, 220 hertz, so it's not too hard on the ears, and 0 dBFS because it's going to give some of my viewers nightmares. I'll turn it down a bit for the video. Here it is now. So far, so good. Now, I'll fader it down by 138 decibels. I guess you want to hear it. I did play it, but you heard nothing. Minus 138 is the Marianas Trench of audio. What I'll do now is pipe my sickly sine wave to an aux track, where I'll boost it up again by 120 dB, and then to another aux track, where I'll boost it another 18 dB to get the full 138. My trim plugin only goes to 12 dB, and I only have 10 inserts. It looks complicated, but this is what I need to do to get such a massive boost. Before I play the result, bear in mind that I've taken down the original sine wave by 138 decibels, and then boosted it by 138 decibels. If minus 138 dBFS is anywhere near the noise floor of the door, the sine wave is going to come back mangled and noisy. Take a moment to imagine what you're going to hear. I'll make sure it isn't too loud or unpleasant. Here we go. It's clean! Clean as a proverbial whistle. Come on, you expected it to be about as clean as a politician's dirty laundry. But it's pristine. In fact, I'll give you another demonstration that will work well on headphones. I'll copy the original sine wave track, set it back to zero, route it directly to the output and pan it left. My cut and boost sine wave, I'll pan right. 
If there are any differences, you'll hear them in stereo, and you'll see any differences on the vectorscope. It's mono! Good, glorious mono! And there's no noise. Just to demonstrate further that there's no noise, I'll go back to before the stereo test and mute the sine wave track. So we're still listening to 138 decibels of boost. Can you hear any noise? I can't hear anything but the sound of silence. So, what does this prove? Well, it shows that unlike most other places in audio, whether analog or digital files, your door has, for all practical purposes, no noise floor. Or, again, for all practical purposes, an infinitely low noise floor. In conclusion, not only does your door have massive headroom, it also has massive footroom. See you soon.